Welcome to What's Sold, the channel where we only show you and talk about the things that we bought to sell and actually sold. We tell you where we got it, how much we paid, and what we earned. Let's do it. First off, today we have this um, costume brooch that you can see here. It's got, uh, you know, it's kind of like a lighter pink, darker pink rhinestone um, setup here. It's quite, it was quite large, uh, really well made. Um, I don't know if this is a Juliana piece or not. I tend to think maybe it isn't. We definitely have some of the figure eight puddling here. Um, it's got the built-in pin. <clears throat> it may have been, uh, but it didn't draw a ton of attraction uh, if it was. It was an auction piece. Um, sold for $14 with $4.75 shipping. It probably only cost about $3.50 to ship actually, um, but I only paid $3 for it. And that was just one, it just took one week, one cycle, um, basically to get uh, that particular sale. Um, next up, we've got uh, a lot, I got a huge lot of tools at a, um, at a, an estate sale, and this is some stuff that came in it. I bought all of the tools that I got, made several hundred tools for a hundred and, uh, what was it, $125. Um, and I sold two pieces out of that lot that actually uh, made me all that money back. So this sold for ten fifty was a really good deal for that person. I was kind of surprised. I thought I would sell for more, but it's fine. I think it only cost me about eight dollars to ship. Um, so you know, twelve bucks out of this, and this is all just gravy now because I've already made my money back off of the original item. Uh, the next one here is a uh, same from that same lot. A lot of um, ratchet. Um, uh, ratchets basically uh, that you can put little um, uh, sockets on and um, Craftsman brand uh, for all of these actually and another good I mean they basically got these for five dollars a piece they're used um, that's okay so again twenty dollars um, just from those two lots I've made thirty bucks um, off of that this was in the just the first auction cycle too of these tools um, smaller stuff is what we sell we sell mostly we sell all kinds of things small things that you'll see uh, including the next item which is um, a photo vintage photo booth strip so you go into the photo booth you put in your you know your three dollars or whatever it is uh, it takes four shots it prints it out um, this is one that was actually taken in, in an original you know, old school booth that has the whole setup for black and white photography. Uh, so it's all actually photo paper. Um, the negative goes on it. It dips it in the different chemicals. The vat rotates and it, and it does the whole process. It takes a couple, two or three minutes. It drops out. But the problem is that somebody hit the button and walked out. There's nothing in here. Um, and so you would think that this has no value. Uh, oftentimes when people did this, they just threw it away. Well, I ended up with one and uh, I was trying to be creative with the title. I wrote that it was a ghost which is why you can't see it. And that puppy sold for $20. In fact, I've got a lot of photo booth uh, photos because I own a photo booth and uh, I have been selling a lot of these lately. As you can see, this is a more modern one, but it was some kids with some big masks um, on and with some lights in the background, just a photo booth strip. These strips cost about, uh, for me, if I'm gonna buy the paper and use my own, about seven cents. Uh, it's about 14 cents for a four by six, but it cuts it in two and I get two strips. So this cost me seven cents and my time, which was approximately two or three minutes. That's it. Uh, and that, that ended for $20. Um, so that may be a new thing I try to, to dip into here because, um, there's definitely buyers for that. So if you come across, especially old um, antique or vintage photo booth photos, a lot of times you'll just get a single frame, but those have value. Um, this is a small jewelry lot uh, I got. Um, when I buy pieces like this individually, I'll never spend more than $3 for them, unless it is a brand that uh, and a type that I know could sell for you know, 50 or more dollars, 100 or more dollars, then sometimes I'll spend up to five or six bucks, maybe eight at the most. But um, these were all pieces that uh, came in a, in a larger lot that I got of jewelry and I broke them into small lots to sell them off. Uh, this particular lot had one, two, three, four pieces in it. I'll count uh, earrings as one piece. And um, uh, that sold for $20 in the first auction cycle. Right here we have, let me click on the uh, regular 
the original uh, shot here. This is a Forstner bit. It's just a tool. Uh, this came in that lot of tools. Again, uh, put it up as one auction, $7.50. Uh, this is not something I would have bought on its own probably, although it being in its own package uh, helps because um, it just looks newer and uh, I think it was maybe used once or twice and that's it. And so um, it was good. $7.50. Uh, I don't mind that because all of that adds up to be my, my money back on the, the overall lot of tools that I bought. This was a disappointment, and uh, you know, this is another one of those that I got to share the disappointments as well as the uh, as the uh, the home runs. But uh, this is a bunch of prayer beads, and it's uh, definitely older. Uh, probably comes from I'm not exactly sure the Middle East somewhere, but also these beads are made of bakelite, which is kind of a, a collectible early uh, plastic that was used in jewelry among various other types of things. Um, I bought this. I held onto it for a long time. I had interest when I had it listed for a hundred dollars. <clears throat> didn't sell, didn't sell, lowered it, lowered it, finally did an auction, just wanted to move it, and I just didn't have the right buyer at the time. Five bucks, uh, I think I paid three for it, so it wasn't that I lost money, but um, I really probably should have held on to that. But sometimes when things don't sell and you hold on to them for a long time, you just got to move it because things are coming in all the time. I don't really get concerned if I sell something low because it's not like... First of all, within a month's time, I've forgotten I had it in the first place. <laughs> I'm not worried about it, and I'm not missing it, and new things are coming in all the time, and so that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. The next thing here is something from a rock and mineral collection I bought at one point in time. It's a, it's a, it's a, a rough... Uh, rock, it's a mineral, uh, that is uh, green in color. It is a type of nephrite jade. So you think of jade or jadeite coming from like China um, or Asia. Uh, it, there's also variations uh, that come from other parts of the world. There's a type that come that you can find in New Zealand uh, specifically. It's its own um, kind of type. And then you've got this that um, washes up and or forms along the coast of California. And that's where this came from. Uh, it was 646 grams. It's a large slab. Uh, there are collectors of mineral specimens that want this. There are people who, in the jewelry world, who want to cut pieces out of this and and, and uh, sand it down and, and create jewelry out of the pieces. Um, so either way, I put this up uh, as an auction and it ended $120. I think I paid less than $100 for a very large rock and mineral collection. So this one specimen has brought me all my money back. It took me quite a while to sell that, but not because uh, it actually took a while to sell it once it was live. It just took me a while to get it up and available. Um, the next thing here is Murano glass or, or um, the variation of Murano glass. It's art glass. It's handmade and blown. This is made to look like pieces of candy. As you can see, beautiful colors in here, these kind of uh, squiggly and or, and or line motifs, but they're twisted at the ends with different colors. Um, I, this came in a lot of jewelry I bought from a thrift store, so I didn't buy this individually. I wouldn't have paid more than $3 for this entire lot. Uh, I've done that before. $10 on an auction. This one also was a little bit of a disappointment. I promise we'll get to ones that were uh, not disappointments, but <laughs> uh, this was a brooch I got. I just thought it was uh, unique. It's like of a person, these uh, pieces of glass, stones that were somewhere cut, facet cut at the bottom, like the hands and the uh, feet, and then the head. Maybe the, the back of the head portion here, as you can see, um, whoops, let me get on here, right here, was chipped, and so that brings the value down. <clears throat> but um, I thought it was an interesting piece, still only sold for five dollars this again came in a lot so i was only pennies into this if you look at um the cost per item and i've already made my money back on that so this five dollars was as if it was just um straight profit i'd already taken care of the cost of goods here's another piece of bakelite that's used in a, a, a large barrel bead that was used as a pendant in this necklace. This is a costume necklace. Um, I tested it. It is bakelite. You can use a, a type of um, substance called semi-chrome polish. It comes in a little tube, almost like toothpaste, and it's a pink color. If you rub it on there and it turns uh, yellow or orange, then it is in fact bakelite. Um, that stuff's cheap, you know, eight or ten bucks. You can buy it on Amazon or other places. Uh, put this up on auction. Um, if I had left it as a buy it now, I could have probably made as much as thirty or forty dollars on it. But again, I wanted to move it. I paid three dollars for it, so eighteen fifty was fine by me. Here's another uh, kind of antique item uh, from the 1920s. This is a, a genuine 20s article. Um, it is a just a purse with kind of like a metal chain, uh, you know, that goes on it. Um, it's a metal. It clasps in the middle, and this is beadwork. It's gorgeous. Um, 
I think that the colors are heavily faded over time. It's got condition issues. It had some tears on the side. It could be repaired by somebody who knows how to do that. Um, I got it in a lot of stuff I bought at a thrift store, so I'd already made my money on it. I was disappointed in the sale of it. I could have done more. This all happened when I put something like four or 500 items at a time on auction that had all sat in my store for a year and hadn't sold. I started them all out at $5. Um, I just wanted to move it. So I didn't really care all of the stuff I'd made my money back on already. And so I had just, I had hundreds of items that the cost of goods were taken care of and it really didn't matter to me what they sold for. I needed to free up space because I'd already bought a bunch of more things. So if this had not been damaged, uh, it would have sold for quite a bit more than that. But again, because um, it had sat there for a while, I just wanted to get it out to somebody who cared about it. Here were some more tools that came from that tool lot. These are vice grip, uh, like wrench type things, or, or uh, these are Peterson brand. Um, two, basically the same size, uh, $17.50 uh, with five bits. I have a little uh, tintype or daguerreotype plate of a woman sitting in a chair, very old looking chair here, if I can zoom in here, really cool looking. Um, the interesting thing about this piece, uh, you can see a bunch of dust and things that had a little bit of condition issues, but she's holding, uh, this could be a book, it could be a small photo album that would have held um, small photographs, maybe not unlike this one, it might be a Bible. Um, but the interesting thing about this piece is you can see it's got this gilt color, which is uh, typical for pieces like this that are framed, but um, you can't quite tell in this photograph, but right here at her earrings, here at this little brooch uh, or pendant on a necklace that she's wearing, and right here on a ring, someone had come in with gold leaf and hand painted a little gold on that so that it shined and kind of drew your attention. I thought it was interesting, a little unique. Um, these things can sell, depending on the content, for lots of money. $50, $100, $150. Stuff from the Civil War era. Um, and uh, of men in uniform and things typically are some of the content that sells for the most money or really bizarre, unusual things that are unique that you don't see that often. Um, again, I started this at five bucks, somebody bid 10 and, uh, and that's what it went for. That came in a, a large buyout at a thrift store as well. This also came from the thrift store. I had a bag of eight different sets of vintage Boy Scout mess kits. So in these kits, typically um, it's a single item that either has a spoon, fork, and a knife in it, or in this case, um, whoop, let me roll back up here. Uh, in this case, they're separate. So the spoon's by itself. It's a folding handle uh, fork and a folding handle knife. This is one of the older types of sets. Um, <clears throat> so this one went for $11.50, and I don't know if I have the other one on here yet. The other one went for about that as well, uh, so I was happy. My cost of goods are already back to me on those. This is like a little, um, like a jigger type thing for uh, mixing uh, cocktails and things, putting different ingredients um, in and, and mixing them together. And uh, it says at the bottom, I think... Yeah, so this says 50cc Prada is the brand. Um, this is like a silver plated um, thing. It's 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 unusual. Uh, it's got the little handles. You don't see that all that often. Um, but again, didn't have a lot of interest. Five dollars on that. It cost me a dollar at a thrift store. Here's uh, some more Crown Trafari again. Like I said before, um, I think I said this in this video, when I get these, I usually don't sell them individually unless I'm gonna sell them for $50 or more. I typically wait until I have a handful, three, five, 10, and I'll sell them in a small lot. Uh, one I did before all featured brushed gold and faux pearls. This one is just the brushed gold. You can see at the back of it, here is the brand again, Trafari, Crown Trafari, meaning it's got the crown over it. Um, these uh, bring decent values. But again, I don't know what it was. Either these are not as sought after or I just didn't have enough buyers watching it. Just sold for $5. Some like, These will sell for $15 to $20 a piece if on Buy It Now pretty regularly. So somebody got a steal. And this happening from time to time doesn't actually bother me, honestly, because if a person comes and sees that I have a piece of jewelry that they can get a great price on, and then they look at my store and they see lots of other jewelry pieces, all of a sudden now I've got somebody who wants to follow my store. And then every time I put something in the store, they're potentially seeing that. And I get repeat customers all the time 
for that reason alone. It's also a good idea if you're going to uh, sell multiple items in the same category to put in the description, like if it's a, a piece, a brooch or a piece of jewelry, say, please check our store. We've got hundreds more pieces just like this. And if they do happen to look at the description, they'll be like, oh, maybe they'll have other things I want at good prices. And then now you've got somebody combing through multiple items in your store and not just one. This was a cool piece that I put together. I got the picture by itself and this in a bag. This bag I got for $5 and this picture came in a large lot of photographs that I've already made all my money back. I really like it. It is a, an antique scene, uh, early 1900s, late 1800s of a barber shop. It's a man getting his neck and his, and his uh, you know, getting shaved. Um, and you can see what the inside of a barber shop looked like at that time. You got men in the back watching it. You got the person who's taking the photograph and the barber himself. And then this is antique barber items. You've got some scissors, you've got some trimmers, um, a, a straight razor, uh, not a straight razor, but like a kind of like a Gillette uh, type of a safety razor there. Uh, $11.50. Again, I was disappointed. Uh, maybe this whole episode is what happens when you get disappointed. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to get to some better stuff, but uh, I'm just, again, I'm not, this is not a YouTube channel that says, hey, look at every single thing I buy that's just made, it's just like worth more than gold. That's not the reality. The reality is $5 here, ten dollars there, twenty dollars there, and at the end of the month, I've made enough to pay my bills. And every once in a while, I have a big sale, and that's just the way that it goes sometimes. Um, here is a large lot of marbles, um, different sizes, um, really kind of cool colors. These are vintage pieces. A lot of them are uh, handmade um, or very early variations of machine-made marbles. Um, a lot of them have little little uh, spots on them, pontils where they were they were cracked off after they were hand blown. Um, I had a bunch of marbles, like a bunch. Um, even though I might have lost some, I still have some. If you know what I mean. Um, Put this up, 13 bids, 2350. Uh, there's a good collector market out there for marbles still, uh, not nearly as much as there was decades ago, but they're still it's still going strong. Um, this is a, a type of item I, I, uh, I like to get, and I need to do a video before too long where maybe I'll just highlight everything and what I'm about to say, which is items that you can regularly get for a dollar or less at thrift stores, antique stores, uh, yard sales, estate sales, that you can sell for 10 times profit or more. So this is a perfect example. Most of the thrift stores around here sell um, glasses um, and sunglasses for a dollar or 50 cents. And all the time, I'm combing, I'm digging through these piles and I'm pulling out nice name brand stuff. I didn't know the brand Persol before I found this. When I saw it, I saw a brand I didn't recognize. I saw a, a, a pair of sunglasses that seemed to be decent quality, were vintage, were kind of a vintage look. I looked them up and found that they can bring values. I paid 50 cents for it. I sold it for 10. Could have gone for more if I'd waited longer, but things like neckties, things like... Um, you know, like this, like glasses. <clears throat> um, what are some other things? Sometimes you'll find little little uh, bins of like little matchbox cars or box cars or uh, Hot Wheels. Or there, the list goes on. But you can find things for fifty cents or a dollar all the time that you can sell for ten dollars or more. Um, and I do it regularly as well. Last thing here uh, on this little uh, segment is uh, three pocket watch chains that um, were gold plated. A lot of them have condition issues, like as you can see, this one's the uh, still the more true gold color, and this one's like clearly faded, and this was uh, majority of it is faded. So it had a plating on it that has worn off from use and over time, but they still have um, value because people put them on pocket watches. Um, they collect different types. And so, and sometimes if they're gold filled or they have gold content, uh, people will buy them and um, use them for scrap and harvest the gold. In this case, just $10, not a big deal. Um, I paid, I was sent in on each of these. These came in a large jewelry lot that I bought. Right here we have a lot of uh, marks or equivalent um, miniature, like, plastic toys of animals. And these are kind of like, you know, think of army men, but these are animals instead. You got different colors, different types of animals. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I had a large little lot of these. Uh, didn't take up a lot of space, um, but I just threw these up for 10 bucks. They came in a, a, a lot of things that I bought recently at a estate sale. And uh, I just wanted to move them. I'd had them a little while. $10 was okay with that. I took a best offer of $40 on this. These are gold filled. 
so this is not solid gold. This is a, 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 an outer coating of 14 karat gold over a, <clears throat> an alloy metal, but it features leaves made of jade and the rose petals or the rose flower uh, are made of angel skin coral. So coral that comes from the ocean. Um, and so uh, I was I was happy with this. This was a three dollar purchase. Uh, I find gold filled jewelry, gold uh, jewelry with semi precious to precious gemstones, and solid you know gold gold and silver jewelry all the time mixed in with costume jewelry because I know how to uh, look at it and I know places that either don't spend enough time to research it or they don't know how to determine what's in it. Um, and so this was a three dollar purchase. Turned that into forty dollars. Took about two weeks. <clears throat> that was from a local thrift store. Here is uh, a, a brooch that uh, features smoky quartz, or smoky topaz rather, um, and uh, this is probably a gold-plated piece, although it doesn't, it's not marked that, but it just looks like it. Um, it's just of a, of a bee, um, and I got a, I, I put this up for $28 in a week. I'd sold it. Um, it's unique. People like uh, brooches, number one and number two, um, brooches that uh, involve animals or insects or bugs or various things that are unique. Um, there's definitely a market for that. So this was a, this came in a, a jewelry buyout that I did. Um, and I've already made my money back on it at this point, so that's been several months ago. Here is a, a lock that I got. I got a, a, a little, um, this was at the, um, the buyout that I did of a bunch of tools um, at an estate sale. And this came in a, uh, a metal um, toolbox, like a small one. And it was completely full of keys, keys on keychains, and probably a dozen uh, antique locks. And some of them had keys. And this is an example of one that had sort of... Um, unusual or maybe not as common looking keys in the lock. Very rusted, but it had two keys and it still worked. So somebody was watching it. I offered them $22 and they accepted it. Um, here is a, a really fun story I'll tell you really fast. Uh, I buy and sell postcards all the time. I sometimes I buy them individually and sometimes I buy them in large lots. Um, <clears throat> I bought about two weeks ago now a lot of, uh, of, of vintage postcards. L the photo looked almost identical to this for 24 pounds of postcards. I got those postcards in. I sorted through all of them. I pulled out ones that I thought had standalone value to sell by themselves or in small lots. And that represented about two pounds of postcards. I then took the remainder of what I bought. This is the next day. Photographed this, put up a listing for 22 pounds for $375. And I took a best offer for 300 plus $33 in shipping. So that story is essentially I paid $300 for 24 pounds of postcards. I pulled out what I think represents about $1,000 worth of postcards. I turned around and sold what was left for the same amount that I paid for everything. So all of these postcards I now have, two pounds of postcards, uh, my cost is already back to me, uh, and so I have no cost in them. And now it's just my time to list them, and whatever I bring in is my profit. So I was really happy about that. There was a lot of foreign cards in here. I made sure to specify that in my listing, um, and so that's why somebody, you know, wanted to offer less, and I accepted less because foreign postcards, generally speaking, don't sell as well for us as um, on, on platforms like eBay. Then there's another platform called Hip Postcard where there's lots of postcards and people around the world buy them. I may start selling on there. I've not done it yet, but uh, for now I'm focusing primarily on American postcards other than certain categories. Um, this is a watch that came from a recent thrift store buyout. <clears throat> there were, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 watches in that lot. This one and another one were probably the more valuable ones. This is a, a Tag Hauer, I don't know how you pronounce it, um, Hewer, but uh, it's a, like a mid mid to upper uh, range uh, watch brand, and uh, so sold this one. I took a best offer of two hundred dollars on this, and that took only a week, one one cycle. Um, here is a brooch of a pineapple with rhinestones. Paid three dollars for it, sold it for twenty. Uh, somebody told me recently that pineapple brooches are a sign, uh, or sort sort of like a, a secret a sign to other people that would know that you are a swinger. So you're someone that swings, goes around with other people uh, frequently. I didn't know that, and I have no idea if that's why people are buying pineapple brooches from me, but for whatever reason, pineapple brooches. Uh, if I see one, I buy it every time because I know it's going to sell. Here is um, a little piece of jewelry that I got. Um, 
that you know pay three dollars for it but it uh, is made of sterling silver and uh, I don't know if it's uh, it maybe it's I guess it was retired but this is like a boutique brand a brand called Grace and Heart it has a G and an H on that I didn't know it so I had to look it up but um, was it you know cheap to buy and I sold it within a week for thirty two dollars now we have uh, this another lot of Crown Trafari jewelry um, here we have like a Bengal bracelet and um, another one of these brushed gold tone uh, brooches. Threw this up really quickly, sold pretty much immediately, 14 bucks. Um, I was less than a dollar into each of these, and so uh, that's why I listed it for cheaper than I could have, because I wanted to sell it quickly. Sometimes you'll see me sell things on here, and you'll be like, whoa, uh, why did you sell it for so cheap? Well, <clears throat> when I buy it super cheap, I can afford to sell it for less than the typical sale. And the reason I do that is because I want it to sell quickly and I want to undercut my competitors. It's not a new uh, strategy. This is, happens in business all the time. And so other resellers uh, get mad at me all the time on this and other videos that we uh, in the Slick Web Media family put out because they're like, you know, you're just bringing the whole market down. I'm like, well, listen, I'm not going to apologize for buying a thing and selling it and, and making my business uh, move forwards. This is just what you do. Um, if you want to beat me out on my price, then you need to find a way to, to find things cheaper. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, anyways, the point is, you. what I'm telling you is I sold it for this price. I sold it quickly. Uh, I could have sold it for more if I've waited longer. And that's always the deal. If you wait longer, you'll sell things for more. Um, this is a, a lot of pocket knives, not particularly valuable pocket knives. Um, they are functional. Um, there's some condition issues, whatever else, but pocket knives are a category of things not unlike watches, pocket watches, fine jewelry, costume jewelry, postcards. Like I've got a lot of these categories that I know things sell. They have high sell through rates. If you look at the number, if you look up pocket knife lot, on eBay, it'll tell you how many items are currently listed. And then if you go to what's sold, you can see how many of those sold in the last 90 days, and you divide that number from the number that's currently listed, and that will tell you what percentage of those things sell in a 90-day cycle. And anything that's like 10% or more is a very high sell-through rate. Some of these categories I sell in are like a 50% sell-through rate or more, which means like this is going to sell, like there's a 50-50 chance this will sell in 90 days, which is really, really good, especially if I can lower my price. But this cost me basically a dollar a piece. I sold it for $20. This is the best thing I've done in the last week, which is I went to donate a bunch of stuff at a local thrift store. I buy a lot of stuff from this thrift store, and I also donate a lot of stuff to this thrift store. It serves my community. It's for, uh, it, it serves a, a, a home for, um, for, for, for young boys who, uh, for whatever reason, don't have uh, a family that can raise them. And so, um, I, I like the cause. I like uh, investing in my community in that way. And also their existence helps me because I buy things and resell. Um, so I was going there actually just to donate things. Uh, I donated an entire truck bed full of stuff. And I thought, well, I do really well here. You never know. Sometimes I don't get anything. Sometimes I get a lot. I'm just going to do a walkthrough. And I'm glad I did because I found these two candelabras. And uh, they are as you can see from the stamp, 950, 950 silver. So 925 is sterling silver. This is more quantity of silver uh, than even sterling. And even though they had a little bit of filling in the base, which helps them stand up and not fall over, um, they, uh, they, you know, they basically still weighed a lot. They were like four and a half pounds total. It would have been probably two pounds of silver. Um, I put this up and within two hours, it sold for $350 and they cost me $2 a piece. So they didn't know they were silver. I paid $4 and I was able to sell them same day for $350. That is the optimal type of sale. When you buy it, you, you can get it up quickly. You can sell it quickly for a really good profit margin. This is a tool, it's a chisel, it's a large chisel. Um, it's a Sheffield brand. I bought, this came in my lot of tools that I paid $125 for, that all the tools you've seen sold in this video came from that lot. Um, 
This one I, I accepted a best offer of $18 for. But again, all of these things, I had hundreds of tools. And just in this one video, you probably saw a representation of maybe 20 to 25 tools total. And even just all the tools in this sold video uh, has made me all my money back on all of that. I also have a bunch of um, hand planes and various um, draw knives and all kinds of things still available to sell. And when I do, that'll be straight profit. This is also from that tool. Uh, lot craftsman um, little ratchet wrench uh, I think I got somewhere around 20 ratchet wrenches of various brands craftsman Stanley um, and different ones uh, and I've sold maybe 20% of those and this is one I took a best offer of $20 I'm selling about each of them for about $20 so again 20 of them $20 a piece that's $400 and that's three times more than I paid for the entire lot of tools so I'm in a really good spot on that this was another one. I, uh, ironically, uh, or incidentally, I bought this violin from the same place that I bought those candelabras from a different day. I paid $30 for it. It was a violin. It was an old violin that had a sticker in it that said that it had been serviced by someone in 1927. I'm going to see if I can find... Uh, there's one, uh, it's a, a Steiner, was the brand, this is a German-made uh, violin. You can see that old script, someone was writing in cursive on a label. They would have written the label out, then they would have put some glue on it and put it down with tweezers inside of there and tried to stick it in. Um, it was in Asheville, North Carolina, near where I live, and it was dated September of 1927, was the last time that someone serviced it and wrote in it. Um, I don't know how old it is, it's at least from the 20s, could have been from late 1800s. All that to say, sold it for $200, and it was a $30 investment. Here was a very, very dainty, very lightweight. We're talking two grams or less of weight, but it was an 18 karat gold chain. Um, if I had had an 18 karat gold pendant uh, currently in the store, I would have put that on it to try to sell it to maximize my value. I didn't have that, though. I put it up as $130, and I took a $112 best offer on that. Gold sells well. You can find that, and if you know what to look for, you can find gold and silver all over your community at thrift stores, antique stores, and stuff. Uh, places uh, where they know what it is, but they have it undervalued, or they don't know what it is, in which case you can buy it for really cheap. Here was a lot of a bunch of scrap uh, silver jewelry. It was either heavily tarnished, damaged, broken, earrings that are missing the other the other side, various things like that. When I have those, I don't pitch them. I put them in a bag. And when it gets up to 100 or 200 grams, I put it in as a scrap lot and I sell it. I'm going to get about 75% of the gram uh, weight in money. So all that to say, if it's 100 grams, I'm going to get about $75. If it's 200 grams, I'm going to get you know, maybe $150, something like that. So here we are, 210 grams, and I sold it for $150, right on, on par with what I expected. Uh, each of these pieces, uh, if I bought them individually, I wouldn't have bought them if they were broken, first of all, unless they were really heavy. But I uh, would have only paid $3 a piece for any full piece of jewelry. Uh, and a lot of this came out of a recent thrift store buyout. Here was another instrument that I bought from that same thrift store. This one cost me $40, but it was a completely intact, perfectly functional uh, dulcimer that had a strap, it had a book with it, it had some other accessories, and it also came, let me find the, the picture of the accessories, right there picks and different things, finger picks. It had like a thing that helps a master key to help it, you know, be in tune and this and that. And then it had this uh, zip up carry duffel bag that it would go in. It was great. I took a best offer of $180 on that within a week. So $40 investment, $180 back. This came in the thrift store buyout I recently did, and I was very happy to find them. Uh, up to a couple of years ago, I didn't even know what these were, but I got into a lot of 100 that I paid $100 for, and I think I probably made about $1,000 total off of that lot that I did the first time, and so I've never forgotten. These are military challenge coins. If you don't know what these are, you need to look at them because there's apparently a pretty big collector market, and they sell for a good amount. Certain ones can sell for hundreds of dollars a piece. I threw this lot of 29 up, and within about three days, uh, I got the offer that I wanted or I you know they didn't even offer me anything I got what I listed it for so $280 uh, it was a really good uh, thing you know it cost only about five or six bucks to ship so I was really happy with it 
Last thing on this video, another pair of uh, a piece of uh, jewelry, a pair of earrings. They're sterling silver. They feature uh, turquoise in them. I paid three dollars for them because they didn't know they were silver and took a best offer of twenty four dollars and was very happy with that. Well, folks, I hope that this helped. Uh, you a little bit to see what's out there, what we're doing, what things to look for. Uh, we'll see you next week with a whole new list of things that have sold. And uh, good luck on your treasure hunting.